Who doesn't love punching Nazis in the face? I know Indiana Jones loves it. Hello everyone. I watched Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, directed by James Mangold, the fifth movie in the series. Yes, fifth. It stars Harrison Ford as Dr. Henry Jones, Mr. It Indiana himself. We also have Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Mads Mikkelsen, Antonio Banderas, John Reese davies Toby Jones, Boyd Holbrook, and Shanette Renee Wilson. And wouldn't you know it, Nazis are back and are <laughs> ruining Indiana's day. And well, specifically, they're trying to get the something that uh, basically, I don't remember the name of it. <laughs> But they're trying to get this dial, which supposedly you can time travel with, and Archimedes is the one that made it way back in the old days, as they say. And they're trying to basically stop the Nazis from getting it so they can travel back in time. And, you know, Indiana Jones has already seen it all. He's already, he knows that, hey, I don't believe in this stuff, but sometimes it happens. So we know some crazy stuff's gonna happen in the movie. It does. Mads Mikkelsen plays the Nazi character. There's a couple others. Boyd Holbrook is like his protege or something. Not really explained other than he's probably a racist. <laughs> That's it. Uh, his character, not the actor. And so, yeah, I... Oh, this movie is interesting because Harrison Ford, as course, is great. V Phoebe Waller-Bridge is amazing. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen is just seems like he's cashing a check. I don't. There's not really much to his character other than he helped get people on the moon, uh, and it seems like James Mangold was like, "What if I pull a." what I did in Logan with Indiana Jones a little bit because with Indiana Jones, he's divorced, he's going through some stuff, he's retiring, it's the end of his life cycle basically is how they're basically playing it off. But he goes on adventures, Harrison Ford's like almost 80. The CGI is hit or miss in this thing, especially with Harrison's face. The opening scene is one of those scenes where everyone's like, it's too dark, I can't see what's going on. and. It's true. I mean, I could see what was going on. I, I know what was happening, but it was just so, so much of a bad idea to start on that dark of a scene when I'm dark, I'm talking about when you look at it, not like the emotions of it. Uh, when you look back at the old Indiana Jones movies, they're pulpy. They are making fun of themselves while having fun. You know, Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, the very first one, even Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is doing stuff. Raiders of the Lost Ark is the first one. Almost forgot that. Sorry, apologies. But each of them open with this bright, great colors in the screen and just a fun little, little action scene. And this one is not that. It's not that. I mean, it still feels like an Indiana Jones movie. Don't get me wrong. There's still fun stuff. Indy's uh, interactions with Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character, Wombat, I don't know her real name, but that's her nickname, and they have fun. I think that little group right there is really great and gives a nice little chemistry to the movie. But overall, this movie does not, it doesn't hold up. And I, I don't understand why they try to do it again. They failed with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and I don't know if they really failed here because I feel like they casted the right people. It just seems like the writing wasn't the best. It's not as pulpy as I want in Indiana Jones to be. I want self-referential humor. I want parody of the genre. I want just having a good time. And a lot of this is not having a good time. And yeah, I don't, I can't recommend this movie. I will say there were people in the theater that were busting up laughing, having a good time. 
So I think there will be people that like this movie, but this goes back to my larger point about legacy sequels in that when you try to make a legacy sequel, it's either going to be super loved or super hated, or it's just going to divide and there's going to be no one that can agree on if, is this movie good or not? You've seen that with Matrix Resurrections. You saw it with Ghostbusters Afterlife. You've seen it with a couple others. There's a few Top Gun Maverick, obviously, that most people generally agree is great, but it's so hard to capture that essence of the original because it's so baked into nostalgia that when you create one with no nostalgia attached, it's kind of hard to really match that energy that used to exist. And so, yeah, I can't recommend going to watch this movie. And it's got a huge budget and it's not going to make its money back. So that's another negative for it. I'm not going to spoil it, but there's crazy stuff that happens at the end of the movie, as with all Indiana Jones movies. But obviously Kingdom of the Crystal Skull just amped it up beyond reproach. And then obviously this one does something crazy too, but I don't think it's out of place. I think it makes sense in terms of the story. It sets up everything that's happening. Indiana Jones is punching Nazis. So, I mean, at the end of the day, your, your enjoyment of this movie may vary. I, my enjoyment was not that great. So I'm going to rate it probably a five out of 10 for the fifth movie. <laughs> it is, again, the cast is great. And I think the chemistry between Phoebe Waller-Bridge and Harrison Ford is really good. I just don't think the story was worth telling. I, I think Indiana Jones should have retired off screen, never make a movie ever again. These are, you gotta let some, some series and franchises walk off the screen and never come back. You gotta fade to black and well, hopefully they've learned their lesson because Harrison Ford is getting older and they cannot continue to CGI his face onto other people's faces. Un esercito di pro